What's up, Go Enthusiasts, and welcome to a video on the sixth Samsung Cup of 2001, round one between Rui Naiwe and Cho Chikun. Why are we looking at this game? Because it is wicked. It is extraordinarily interesting and cool, beyond what I thought was going to happen as I looked through it. This game was, of course, suggested by a patron of mine. You can check out my Patreon if you want to support the channel. But uh, it was suggested of a, of a few games, and this is the coolest. I mean, this game is, is sick. So let's take a look at what happened. Jochikun played a large knight in the upper right corner. Uh, the large knight was somewhat unpopular in the day, I think. But, I mean, <laughs> if it was, it was for a reason, because Jochikun misplayed the heck out of that. We're going to talk about that later. Anyway, for now, Rui Naiwe plays a shoulder hit and then a random split here. I don't understand the split. That doesn't make any sense. In modern theory, it would never be played. But... It was 2001, so we give them some stack. They didn't know what to do. <laughs> and uh, they, they didn't like not know anything. They actually played this Joseki in the upper left, pretty much just as you would play it today. Um, I mean, <laughs> we wouldn't maybe exactly go into this variation, but if we did, this is how we'd play it. And there's nothing that wrong. It, it's, you know, this is one of the Joseki that held up post AI relatively well. And Black played a splitting move on the left side where it approached and Black just took care of his group. This all makes sense because Black is planning on eventually counterattacking this wall. Um, that's a crazy idea, but Shoshikun had it, and uh, it's the correct idea. It's the idea that the AI even suggested we should do more of counterattacking these these massive walls. So Shoshikun understood that ahead of his time, but what he did not understand was how to play the upper right corner. So Rui and I sort of walk towards it with this two space. This is sort of motioning at an invasion into the upper right corner. So she might be able to steal away the territory there. And then, yeah, Trisha can play it attach here, which is a very bad move, if I may say so. Um, this is the type of move that I would expect at like a, a North American amateur tournament that I would go to. Uh, that, that level of mistake is not a very big mistake. He doesn't lose that much. But it's so obviously wrong that I have to be very, very harsh with Chochikun here. I mean, he he's known for spending quite a bit of time in the opening and trying to do things right. But I have literally no idea what he was even thinking of doing. This move covers his corner. And maybe he was thinking, like, I have to cover my corner. And this is better than, <laughs> than like, bumping, which is also horrible. Uh, but if you would just do any other random thing and White comes into the corner like this, even if you just let it happen, let's say descend and you just connect and let this happen, this becomes somewhat similar to a 3-3 three, three invasion shape. It's just not that bad. Like, <laughs> nothing has gone that wrong for uh, for Black in this position whatsoever. In fact, in, in comparison to the classic 3-3 three, three invasion, this exchange is unmade, which is good for Black. So, I mean... Uh, way too worried about this ability of that corner. And the reason why it's so bad is that white gets a lot of movement towards the center. So the fact that white gets to push up here, it makes it so that this black um, thrusting movement is just headbutted straight into a white wall. And white, the group on the right side, is not going to be surroundable anytime soon. And her power in the center for fighting is really, really good. So Chochukun wisely tries to mitigate this. He doesn't let Rurunawe block on the right side and start using that to build, but Rurunawe can just take another open corner, and the game goes on. Shoshi could split on the bottom side, and Rurunawe actually played here. This is, again, a very strange move by modern opening standards. Her idea is that she's going to attack that one stone on the bottom and break the bottom side territory. Um, Shoshi kun just says, go ahead. <laughs> he, he invades the... the uh, bottom left, which is probably, honestly, a, a great way to try this, because Chochikun can get attacked in many different places, but it's very hard for Runai to actually find a, a punch, anything that will show her power. She just goes on top of this one backstone, but it takes a base, and now if she had capped on top, um, Chochikun would have slid to the side and taken the base anyway, and he would have been fine. So she chose to attack it more harshly from the side like this, make it run up, and then attack this too. This is a common idea for Rui Naiwe. She likes to do splitting attacks. She likes to attack one thing and then attack the other thing and give the opponent two headaches to worry about at the same time. Uh, in this case, I really don't like the commitment to the bottom side here. This like sliding move, um, that causes there to be a lot of cutting points in White's shape on the bottom side which 
she really shouldn't want to take care of. She doesn't actually want to play on the bottom side right now because the bottom right corner is quite strong, you know? So instead, I think it would have been better to start by attacking the left side stone and then to let this, like, if black would run up by his own accord or run to the side by his own accord, it would be better than, I mean, if black had run up and then we put this stone here, it would, it would be very, very silly, right? So it makes sense that if black might run up anyway, we definitely shouldn't commit to the to the bottom side. So the game continued. These, by the way, are things that I knew without AI, and AI verified them, but I do believe that we've gotten better at the opening without AI. Like, for example, the Kudja game, game one in the Nongshim Cup this year, they played a, a big opening corner basically without AI, telling them what to do, and it was much the same strategic principles as we see in the upper right-hand corner here, but um, both players executed much, much better than we're seeing in, in, in this opening. Of course, they've never seen the AI show any variations, so it's hard to sort of get accustomed to what the proper moves are when nobody knows. But uh, it's definitely a skill that's improved in our play as as Go players, not just by memorizing, but our understanding of the of the opening strategies is is much better. Anyway, um, the tactics are still quite good back in two thousand one. So this sequence was quite nice by. Chochikun. He played this push here and then this Hane. I didn't really think of this Hane when I was looking through the game, but I realized after seeing it, this is a this is a good move. This is a really good move. And indeed, it is. And AI even recommends not blocking here. Unbelievably to me. I mean, it's insane, but AI was recommending something like connect here. I thought you had to block, but the problem is that Chochikun's idea was really, really good. He went to Atari the stone, and Ruin Aiwe could not save it. She just ran out this way. Why couldn't she save it? I mean, it would work. You could save it. When Black Atari is here and descends, you could connect. And then when Black does this, you could eat that one stone. If Black tries to squeeze you, you can just save it. So now, in this variation, White has successfully killed those three stones. That's White's territory. But the box is not very big, and you might notice that the other Black group looks glorious. So this variation is actually good for black. What black had been planning here, a really, really interesting idea, the Hane there was designed to make that sacrifice work so that he could take care of the other group. You know, Ruinaiwe was thinking, if I make a splitting attack, then the two groups interacting with each other will give white some powerful attacking ideas. But Chochukun was thinking, on the other hand, if I'm getting double attacked, that means I can make sacrificing ideas so I can make a TCG. And he's the one who ended up actually um, making a very, very good idea at work. And he managed to capture this stone on the side. So now it looks very obviously good for black. I think Rue and I we can evaluate this too. I don't think that she thought that this would be good and went onto it on purpose. I think she's more like it accidentally happened and now she has the corner territory and is still hoping for some double attack. So she plays this turn. This move is not very satisfying. Um, she was hoping she can run out this one stone next or attack the bottom side next, but um, when Chochikun plays the move on the left side, this is an obviously very powerful shape move. So much territory, so much power. He's super, super thick on the left side now, and Runei's only option is to attack the bottom. So if that bottom side group will get under a serious attack, wait, it's okay. <laughs> okay. But it really needs to be serious. It's very hard, actually, because this group is, is not that hard to live. Black just descends like this, and Rinaiwe immediately gives up. She just plays this attach. This is a sort of leaning attack. She's hoping for a little bit more strength, a little bit more power to be able to execute something very, very harsh on the bottom side. Chochikun answers one time, and then he answers on the bottom side. So he makes sure that nothing too crazy can happen. In doing so, he gives Rinaiwe a little bit of territory in the corner. That Hana is really, really nice. This shape... Um, is very, very compressed for black. White can be very happy <laughs> that black ends up with so little territory in the corner there. And when she pulls back here, you can already say that her attack was like actually somewhat successful. Since the black group is still weak, it has some weaknesses to like run through and to poke out. But this group already having paid some territory for the bottom side group not even being strong yet, it's not a bad result for white. So she did a, a decent job in, in the attacking here. Black pushed through, Haneid, and attached across. Um, 
This move is kind of like a famous mistake. <laughs> it's not, I, I don't know how to, how to describe it. Everybody at a high enough level, honestly, it is quite a high level, but everyone knows that when you attach across a knight's move, it's dangerous, right? But once you get to a high enough level, you start realizing when you attach across a knight's move, no one cuts it anymore. Everyone knows the cut is dangerous, so we just don't do it. And then if you don't do the cut, like Rune Iwe, then when black connects through a knight's move with, you know, a wall, he has to make an empty triangle. And that would be really awkward. He doesn't want to do that. So he does something else. He plays like this. But the other things have problems too. You still have that cutting point on the bottom side. So Rune Iwe just extends and extends. And she says, hey, if you ever want to save that stone, you got to connect it with an empty triangle. you got to suffer the shape. Instead, it would probably have been better for Shochikun to start with another move than this one. This is sort of like the last resort move that we should use only when we have to. But that being said, it's, it's pretty hard to calculate how you would make that happen. Um, maybe we can use the attach here in some at some situations and we can use like block or Hane. The exact sequence is not clear, but to me, I feel very comfortable as white uh, going through a variation like this. Although, I'm not sure I feel that comfortable since this, this white block, I don't know how to improve it, but it definitely doesn't feel very good. Letting black turn in the corner, killing us locally on the bottom side, and only then just extending. I mean, maybe we should just extend first, but then black can play on the right side, and it's sort of weird. Like, where are we getting our territory? Where are we getting our profit? Maybe it was okay for Chojikin to do this. Um, I just feel very bad about this, the shape of having a stone there, you know? That's that's my, my, my real complaint, is I feel bad. But his position should be just fine. And the game continues, he plays that very painful shape move, but Uri and I plays a painful shape move of our own. This net is sort of classically also bad, just the same way as I described the other one. This one, you're indubitably gonna get some empty triangle, some problematic cut. And what she did is she read everything locally and she said nothing, of works none of it is pressure to me and i'm building the right side so you know there's pressure on you so she thought this is going to be making the game harder for black and easier for white there's some real potential profits to be had uh, i think otherwise i think this <laughs> makes the game harder for white and easier for black to have committed to blocking this area when you didn't really need to commit to blocking this area and especially in doing so by making such a weak weak shape However, black plays here and here, which is awful. I mean, um, I know Chochukun is a territorial player, and I know he would beat me every time. <laughs> but this is atrocious. I, I, I mean, um, there's a, there's style, right? And uh, In Xiong, In Xiong Huang, who I respect a lot as a Go teacher, he says that your style is just the type of mistake that you make, which I agree with. I think <laughs> whatever style you have is the type of mistake you make the most often. This is way too territorial. I know ter Chochikun is territorial style, so you can be like, oh yeah, he's, he can make that kind of mistake. It's his style, that's the point. But, I mean, the, any one Don professional knows that this is bad. It's, it's not world championship quality to play for territory here when <laughs> you could just push and cut, do anything. You could cut through here. I mean, there's so much stuff to do on the board that's not fix the corner that you think you already fixed before and make white stronger in the area where they're trying to do stuff that's interesting. And then because white's strong, white tries to start a fight against the black bottom group, and now black has to start this pushing cut anyway. And now you can see, I mean, these two stones are just a complete waste, especially since white stone is actually active in the fight that we're just about to have in the center here. And we were always going to have a fight in the center. It's like super short-sighted by Chochikun that, no, there won't be a fight in the center. It's just naive. Um, anyway... Even though he started the fight horribly, uh, when the fight actually can, like goes, he turns on his, his reading skills, his judgment skills, and he starts playing like a proper world champion class player again. It's something I find very interesting about watching these older games, since they didn't have the theory that we have today. They did a lot of stuff that's just uh, kind of stupid. And then when they start fighting, they do stuff that's brilliant and amazing. And so from here on out, no more criticizing from me. The game actually gets insane. The fireworks are immense and I love it. So cut, cut, extend, jump. Black has to do something in this area. This is the whole point. But this is Chochukun's specialty. This is what he does for a living, man. <laughs> this is how he makes his 
fame, how he makes his money, is he takes that kind of area, that kind of box, and he says, uh, actually, you know, that's not your territory. In fact, I'm attacking you. <laughs> that's what Chochikun is saying right now. He nose hits the two stones, breaking the bamboo, peeping a cut, peeping a cut, and White is so busy, actually, this, this is really, really difficult to deal with. Rurunawe chooses to just connect, which absolutely the sensible thing to do, but then Chochikun extends forward, splitting the white shape, and white needs to play outside here. If white would play inside like this, black wouldn't try to cut, but would just play outside again, and if white plays inside again, black can play outside again, and outside again, and this group on the bottom side is not alive. And the black group can run, and it can race against that group, White is in trouble. I mean, this is this is not easy. Even though White can make some exchange, White's got to fix this eventually. And Black can run. And how, how is White supposed to play this fight with a dead group? I mean, this is just extremely, extremely difficult. So that's why Rurunaiwe has to play on the outside. There's no chance to play inside and start some capture race right now. Black cuts. She still can't play inside. She's got to eat that stone. Black cuts again. This is Chochukun magic. Black has figured out a way. Cut, cut. Some crazy sequence giving up a stone and then connecting here. And now that group on the bottom side, which is locally dead, she's got to save it. She's got to push through and cut. But she's got to fix that ko, because if Black could win that ko, that would be amazing. And then Black can just run. And once again, Chochukun is flying with a weak group. And he's got his own thing to save and a target once he saves it. <laughs> so as long as this weak group can run and get liberties, it doesn't even have to get two eyes. As long as it can run and get liberties, it can start racing this bottom side group and trying to kill that to save itself. This is extremely dangerous for Ruri and Aimei, and Chochukun looks to be in a commanding position at this point in the game. Uh, yeah, if I were playing, I really wouldn't know what to do at all, to be honest. I mean, you have to fix the black block here that can combine with some threats over here. So she chooses to Atari. I mean, if Black gets like any Sente towards the right side, which he will, then this block would immediately work. So Atari here, absolutely necessary. And then Black just connects. So Black is already thinking, look, I have five liberties. <laughs> How many liberties do you have, huh? And that's really, really rough. Rurunawe does a fantastic move, extremely, extremely good move here of capturing like this. Now, this capture is a great, great probe. The meaning is, Black has a couple ways to answer this. Black could either play the Descend, which uh, he does in the game, or, no, sorry, he does not do the, he, he attaches here in the game, I forgot. Wow, 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 wow. Attach there? All right, he, either the Descend or the Connect. These are the local moves that he's gonna play, right? But depending on which one of those he does, Rui has a different plan. If Black would answer here directly, then that reduced the liberty of this white, but it didn't apply any pressure to the right side white. So white would extend here, and black would not really be able to cut, because obviously, if black had a stone here, it would be threatening these two stones, but in this case, it is not directly threatening those stones. So a sequence like this, for example, now the black stones in the center are dead. You can't fill the liberties of these white three stones on the side. So. Black plays here. Rurunawe played this probe, asking Black which one he's going to do, and Chochukun played a probe back. Both moves, recommended by AI, by the way. Blue, blue moves, perfect moves. Extremely high quality fighting here. White plays the attach here. Blue move again, by the way. <laughs> the meaning is, um, White was not allowed to push through like this. If she would have tried to push through, Black would cut like that. That's rough. So what she's gonna try to do is she's gonna try to set that up. She plays this attach, hoping that Chochukun will play some basic forcing move and allow her to make a double threat against the one stone and the, the five stones, most importantly, and the two stones over here. So Chochukun just pulls back here, trying to be as safe as possible, make the situation as sterile, as controlled as possible. But white plays here, which is forcing. These two stones now definitely must answer, and black doesn't answer. <laughs> He doesn't answer because this is a forcing move. And it's yet another probe. This probe is again asking White, well, which one am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to connect here or am I supposed to descend here? And he's going to get an answer out of this move. If White falls back like this, then Black can run with this group towards the center. 
So that means, since Wade will have to answer on the right side, he's going to get a lot of liberties. So he can just play here. And when Wade answers on the side, he can run towards the center. If Wade really tries to surround that, he can kill this here. So instead of doing that, White plays here, tries to put the most pressure on black. But because of that, because white has tried to put the absolute most pressure on black, black says, then I need to combine your weakness here in the center with your weakness on the right side. So let me increase your value of your weakness on the right side. He descended here, making it so that he had more forcing moves on this area. White still had to save like this, and then he cut, and it hurried this way. His plan is to capture this one stone, or let white run it out, and then double attack these two stones and the group on the right side. Push and Hane. White plays cut. White has to save the two stones. If white would die with the two stones, it's, it's all over. So that means black can do anything he wants to attack the right side. Black first connects in Sente, that makes a lot of sense. White captures and has to save the two stones. And then black plays here. Okay, white needs to can't, uh, connect. And black plays connect here. This move was horrible. <laughs> he did it, I think, for a reason. But honestly, I'm not exactly sure. Because the SGF that is public, like, you know, published online that's, that's well known seems to have some transcription errors. This white move is... Uh, unbelievable, it would never happen. It's, it's guaranteed uh, some tr transcriber error. You know, what happens, the way that these games get recorded, is someone was sitting there watching the game and, and putting the moves down on a piece of paper. And sometimes that person would get distracted and they'd miss a couple moves, particularly when the players were like thinking for 40 minutes and the guy's like, oh man, when are these players gonna play? And then he, he, you know, he's looking away, he's daydreaming, whatever. And, and then suddenly they blitz out like six moves in a row and they're like, what, what, what order did these happen? And they can just only scramble to put down the stones where they see them on the board in whatever order that they can. Anyway, I'm pretty sure that's what happened here. White definitely did not extend here. White <laughs> played uh, this move. And then when black did this one, white played push and here. And we're going to get that same situation in the in the game, um, just through a different move order. This obviously this whole sequence blundered, <laughs> as written in the in the transcription. Uh, after white plays here, then black would have just descended, and then either the white group on the right side or the white group on the bottom side will just like die, and black is connected out freely. <laughs> this makes no sense. Um, so that definitely didn't happen in the game. But they still got to this position anyway. And it still was a massive mistake somewhere in this sequence for Chochikun. Somewhere he chose to exchange this connect for the white descent uh, on, the, on the second line here. And uh, that was a really, really big mistake, as we will see here at this moment. Now, if black had just not exchanged that and could instead exchange it the other way, then black would be doing much, much better. He'd get a chance to capture these two stuns, and he'd, he'd have a much, much better condition in the capture race towards the bottom side. But instead, we are playing this game. And this game is going to end up being a crazy co. So black has to start reducing the liberties of this group on the right side because he cannot anymore get enough liberties to race the group on the bottom side. In fact, white can even save the group on the bottom side separately. Uh, actually, white might have been making some mistakes in this sequence as well with regards to the fact that that was possible. At any time here, if white really, really wants, then um, white could have just played... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know how to... <laughs> I don't know when this was possible. It may not have ever been possible. But white could have played here, and if black really tries to kill this, then there's this uh, attached into the corner. It's a great move, meaning that if black plays here, white will play like this and this, and frequent Sumego solvers will recognize this shape as a very classic dead shape that is usually very easy to kill even in, uh, in capture races. So that would be really, really dangerous for black. It means that this white descend is basically sente. So if white ever does this, then black should live somehow. I think this one lives. I'm pretty sure that one lives. And then white would live too. So that was always possible for white, but white instead went as aggressive as possible towards this black group. White is thinking like, hey, black, you just tried to swim in my area and attack me in it, but that was my area, so I'm gonna kill you there. And if that works out, white has already gained so much influence that the game is gonna be basically over. 
So, <laughs> Chochikun needs to get a lot out of the ko, whatever ko there, there is. Uh, notably, if White had not answered here on the first line and captured this instead, then Black would get to play here. Uh, that would be really good, because now there's two ko's, and uh, White is in a lot of, a lot of trouble. Um, instead of connecting here, obviously that's the right way to do it, and then White can Atari like this. Black makes this move. This is a huge co-threat because if Black continues to Atari, this whole white group in the bottom left and the whole area of the bottom left, that could all be Black's. So white needs to cover that, Atari from the top side. Black recaptures and white plays this move as her co-threat. Actually, interestingly, I thought that was the biggest co-threat too, but the AI suggested something I didn't consider, which is to just connect as the co-threat. Just progress the capture race one move. And then if Black really wants to continue the co somehow, they could Atari here if they want, but they're gonna need to find at least one more co-threat and Black has run out of co-threats actually. In the bottom left, the next co-threat here will not threaten to kill the whole thing, it'll just threaten to kill the corner or something. So this variation would be very successful for White. Maybe White should block here, but you get the idea. Instead we have this variation and Chochikun read this out. It's a nice little trick continuation to win the ko, where he plans to capture and Atari. By the way, there might have been deer just back there in the last couple seconds. <laughs> you can rewind the video and see. I hope they, they showed up. Anyway. Um, in the end, White needs to capture these five stones that she threatened in, in the ko threat, and Black captures the tail of the White group there. That was Gote for Black. So Black ends up in Gote, but basically winning the Ko, saving his group. The problem is he also lost a group. <laughs> the group in the bottom right is now pretty much 100% dead. So we have to count. We have to figure out who's winning. Uh, unless you're a very good player, in which case you probably don't have to count to realize that this is amazingly good for White. White is winning. White has so many stones captured over there in the bottom right, so much area captured. It cannot compare to just saving the black group that was breaking an area that White was threatening to build, especially when White gets all this influence. The black area in the upper right, which is now very, very solid, is just not that big. So the black area on the left, the black area over here, they don't compare to the amount of power that White has throughout this game, especially considering she has Sente. Even if she didn't have Sente, she'd probably still be winning, especially considering she has Sente. This game should be over. Should. <laughs> but it isn't. It's nowhere close to over. In fact, the fireworks have yet to even really begin. Because Ruby and I plays here. This is a classic error, and honestly, I see a lot of myself in this move. <laughs> Uh, I often do this. This is what happens when you tell a fighting type player, I like to be a fighter, uh, I like to attack, I like to defend, I like to, you know, <laughs> make everything die on the board. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but sometimes you have to play by territory. And when you tell a fighter, play by territory, we very often get very, very greedy, like way over the line type greedy. The type of greedy that the territorial players know is, is just supposed to be bad, and they don't even try. They don't even bother. This is that kind of move. It's just, um, it's pretty obvious that this is the proper move here. But Rui and I was thinking like, well, I could play there. That's definitely the proper move. There's nothing wrong with that. But why don't I just ask for more? Shouldn't it just be free? If Black just like pushes her down and lets her have the second line and she can still reduce the second line area, like the way that you beat a very strong area like this is you reduce it, you just compress it. So she's like, hey, I'm gonna force Black to answer this and then I'm gonna compress it a bit and I'm gonna gain. And I, I, look, I, I, I played a move that's just a little bit better than the normal average move, I'm so smart. Is, is what I think too when I play territory. I'm all like <laughs> self-aggrandizing. So maybe I'm just projecting, to be honest. Maybe she wasn't thinking like that. Maybe she, this is for an entirely different reason, but I'm pretty sure this is just the classic fall for the greed when the fighter tries to play by territory. What is the flaw with this? Well, Chochukun is going to show us. He knows exactly what the flaw is with being too territorial. He does it all the time. He invades. And this move, compared to the normal move of just taking the territory like this, this move has a balanced purpose between solidity the white center, the white top side, nothing is gonna be wrong, so black can't show that that stone is mispositioned by emphasizing one thing or the other. When you play a move which is unbalanced, which is greedy for one thing, but like really slack towards something else, the opponent can often just show you the slack into something else and you get in trouble. 
So what happened here, Ruinawe's move does not pay attention to her cuts, to her power, to her center potential, even to the top side, and Black shows it. He exchanges that Atari first, because that's good for territory, and he'll never miss something like that, and then he invades. And this invasion makes it so that the connection between this white stone and the other stones is suddenly a really major issue. She has to play this block that's forced. I mean, maybe she could have connected another way, but she has to connect this one somehow. And then Black jumps here. And Black is saying, hey, yeah, you can go on over there and you can reduce that area, but I'm going to break your whole top side back. Are you going to let that happen? Are you going to let me attack your upper left group? Remember, Shoshikun was investing into attacking the upper left group at the very beginning of the game. It hasn't happened yet. He hasn't had a chance until just now. Ruin is like, no, there's no way I can let you start attacking me. I, there's no way I can let you connect to the top side. I got I to gotta block that. I got to invest here. But this is actually a mistake. Unbelievably so. It's a mistake, and Chochukun showed exactly why, and it blew my mind. I, I cannot think of this sequence. And even, even like, seeing it, it, like, hurts a little bit just to think about playing it until I realize just how amazing it is. I have no idea how Chochukun found it, but... This is what he does. He's in another one of White's areas again. He's going to swim. The most genius moves ever. This move. This is awful. Don't do this, except for right now, for some reason. <laughs> it's normally atrocious to end up with a Split Knights move like this. But Chochukun can violate the rules, I guess, because he knows how to cut as well. It also looks crazy. Just split your own knight's move and then suddenly cut here to the two groups with like eyes and so much safety. How is this ever going to work? Well, white really has a lot of debts. So although white can easily take care of the top side, easily take care of the center, and easily take care of the upper left, maybe not all at once. White is in a conundrum. It's a pickle. It's hard. How do we handle this? Which group do you take care of? Whichever one you don't, Black is going to start attacking that one. She chooses to take care of the top side. This makes a lot of sense. The way that I thought you should do it is to play here. This looks so natural to me. If black just extends, then we can push through and push through, and we'll figure out a way to save this group. It's not going to be that hard. I thought, you know, this is easy. But Chuchu can have something special lined up that I think they both saw, which is wedge here first. Why wedge here first? Because then if white naturally Atari's. You should want to Atari. If white would capture here, then of course the top side three stones are just dead. So white wants to Atari, save those three stones, and then black runs out. And the difference is, because wedge happened for this, and because black had played that self-splitting knight's move earlier, somehow he came up with this cutting idea so that he would be able to play the Hane on top here in Sente, the block in Sente, and suddenly, somehow, I mean, the center group and the upper left group, and the, they're all dying, like, all now at once. It's actually going to collapse for white. So white's this move was to cover that. She's covering her own issue on the top side and saying, hey, look, I'm in trouble, but I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix it one at a time. I'm going to fix the top side, I'm going to fix the center, and I'm going to fix the upper left. One by one, I will fix my issues. Back at Taurus. White is suffering so much. I mean, White killed a group in the bottom right, right? That, that was Black's territory. White was supposed to win this game easily. But just one slack moment, that greedy move at end two, and a little bit of active invasion by Chocha Kun, and extremely precise counterattacks, and suddenly everything that White has is in danger of death. White plays the clamp. It's the best move. It's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant move. Meaning, if Black pushes through, which he pretty much has to because his own group on the bottom side is in trouble, then White plans to Hane and Tiger like this, and by doing so, she gets the most forceful shape through to the center, the most counterattacking potential, the most likely chance to connect her center group to her upper left and resolve all of these issues. And Black plays Connect here and says, Now what? Your top side group is still weak. Are you going to save it? Runei was like, yeah, I, I gotta save it. Atari, I'll push through. It lost the game. Push through like this doesn't work. But the reason why is insane. <laughs> Black turns like that, white pushes like this, and Black was supposed to tanuki. It's unreal, <laughs> to be honest. Absolutely unreal. 
Black doesn't Tanuki. He just answers. Why is it unreal to Tanuki? Because he's supposed to play here. Then white can cut and cut like this, and the whole black bottom side is just dead. It's just dead. There's nothing except a chance to capture ace this, and that's exactly the chance that capture ace that black will take. Black will surround that group, try to make a capture ace against that group. If black can get a full squeeze on this, then the whole upper left will die, and the whole top side will die. Everything is going to die. And black is staring at a potential position where the entire top... How many lines is that? Seven lines of the board are black's territory. And white is staring at a position where the, almost the entire bottom five lines of the board are white territory. That's good for white. <laughs> or sorry, that's good for black. I mean, look, the, the black bar is a lot bigger, right? Unbelievable potential trading that could have happened here. But actually, I think that Chochukin saw that, and I think that he knew that he could do that, and that the game is already close. I think that he did this on purpose. Because it looks like this will work even better. Now, Chochukun runs out, and he's going to counterattack this group. So yes, White has managed to save the upper left and the top side right now. Those are very, very strong. But this group in the center, it can't rely on counterattacking the bottom. It can only rely on running through this way. So she runs with a diagonal, and Chochukun says, no, you don't. And she runs. And he says, no, you don't. <laughs> And she connects here. It was fantastic. This connect here must have been calculated a long time ago. Connect here. This is the only way for it to work. Chochukun could have saved these stones anytime capturing that, but he needed to surround the center group. So he cuts this surrounding it. And when this connect happens, there's a crazy capture race going on with this black group versus this white group. Black can throw in an Atari anytime. He doesn't do it. Hiana's here. Why doesn't he throw in and Atari and play here? And White has two liberties, but Black is short of liberties first. So Black needs to extend his liberties. And he has a co to do that. He has a co shape like this. And not only does he have a co, he has co threats. So he plays that co threat. And White has to back off now. There's nothing that White can do to fight this co except to let it happen like this and connect here. And this was all calculated by Rune Naiwe, I believe. Black can connect here and start a capture race because, okay, black could try to sit, make a second eye over here, white is gonna deny that second eye, and black is now racing with one eye, white can't deny this eye, against white's one eye group. It's a direct capture race. It looks like it's even gonna work for black because black can throw in an Atari and take a liberty. White has two liberties then, and white has to play here and here and here, that's three moves. So if white has two liberties and black has three, doesn't black win? Not quite. Because white has an eye and a co. And you can do magical things with an eye and a co. That's what white is counting on here. In fact, they're not going to start it right away because they are smart. And Chochukun wants to make it so that he has the co threats to win the co. So what he does first is he plays wedge. This is the type of professional, world-class quality move that I was looking for earlier in the game. Wedge here is brilliant. It means that white has to back off like this. White would normally just answer with Atari, very normal. But then black has Ataris here, and those Ataris are co-threats for black. That would have won the game for black on the spot. Instead, white falls back. So black manages to get a free wedge and force white to play this almost useless connecting move, and he gets to do it again. Connect here. While the co hasn't started, this is still big, and this is still big. But eventually, finishing the co is going to be big enough. White is going to start taking the black liberties. So black really, really needs to set up a co-threat. He just failed to set up a co-threat on the top side. It's a happy failure. He managed to get so much territory as, you know, in return for failing, he's got a chance to capture those three stones. But he still needs to set up a co-threat somewhere. So what he does, extends here. Makes the bottom left his target. That's the only weak group left. This white is so safe. And this white is the stuff that's going to live in the co. So... White captures the one stone, allowing black to have any co-threat here, and black starts the co, and we go in. The co starts, black fills the liberty from the outside, white fills the liberty from the outside, black throws in first, and Atari is filling all the white liberties, and Atari is the whole white group. Now this black group has two liberties, one, two, and the white group has one liberty. The only way for white to save is with the co, and black plays this co-threat. Actually, I was kind of confused watching the game. I was like, huh, that co-threat? Because obviously White is going to ignore this one. 
white captures. This wins the co. Black at any time can capture here, but white will capture those stones. And black just captures here, and white leaves the group in the bottom left. And white is winning by a lot. I mean, any time... If you judge this position, you can see, I mean, black can capture, sure, the top side. <laughs> Let's draw some boxes again. We have black has this, black has this, the whole left side. He's pretty strong there. But white has this massive, massive box, this massive box. And white is just so strong underneath all the captured stones. And he's even lived a group over here. White is winning this game by like 20 points. So black resigns in, in, in short order. Why did he do that? Why didn't he play the more serious co-threat? Because instead of wasting a move on the first line here, he could have just attarred. Well, then White had planned. The reason why she answered and let Black have one co-threat is because she has one co-threat of her own. Capturing these two stones is a very, very common co-threat you guys cannot forget. If there's one eye with two stones, White can capture the two stones to gain a liberty, forcing Black to throw the stone back in to make it Atari again, and White recaptures. Black needs another co-threat. He could try this one, but now when White wins the co, Black wins this, White can recapture is nothing. So, finally, Runaiwe wins. It was so dangerous, though, and in fact, at this moment, Chochukun had that chance to win by trading back to the top side. He only failed because he got greedy and tried to kill this middle center. It looked like it might be able to die. <laughs> it looked like everything was in trouble. In fact, yeah, this push through of Rui Naiwe seems to be the most natural way to play. I really couldn't believe it when the AI is telling me that that's a mistake. <laughs> what the AI recommended is to cut here. This is one of the most insane AI moves I've ever seen. This cut is just capturable. This doesn't work. <laughs> but the reason why you do that cut is so that the stuff in the center will be more powerful. So you've cut here, and if black answers, so to make sure that his bottom side doesn't die, you know, black could not answer. Black could play some move over here, but then when white answers like this, then the bottom side is dead, and black doesn't have as much power to try to split apart the the center white group in the upper left because these three stones are still weak, right? White put the stones down while those three stones are weak and, and, and has a lot of counterplay. So cut here, black could answer, and then white's plan is to Atari from this side. And black at some point can't answer this, because if black answers everything and we get the same kind of variation as before, now you can see it's 100% different. Black has to come back, and there's no way that black can even dream about surrounding this white. Any, any defending will do. And as long as white can link the top side, the upper left, and the center all together and save everything, it will be beautiful. So wait, throws in the stone to cut here, threatening the bottom side group, managing to make the least fat exchanges in order to make it so that this push through works because the push through did not work in the game because black had the chance to go back this way at this timing and sacrifice the whole bottom side. So to recognize the opponent is going to sacrifice the whole bottom side and cut here first, absolutely insane. Beautiful, beautiful move that could have been played. <laughs> but... You know, I mean, these, these are stuff, these, these are the things that I will, will, will never be able to see. And uh, I mean, that what was played in the actual game is already much, much more than impressive enough <laughs> to, to make this game an absolute joy. So thank you all for watching. I hope you like this game just as much as I did. Be sure to click the like button if you did. <laughs> wait, 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 before you go, one of my generous students has gifted 10 free lessons to the community. If you want to star in one of these lessons, I'm planning to record all 10 and post them publicly on YouTube. I want to share my 10 most commonly valuable and useful lessons that I've given throughout my career. I, I tend to give some of the same types of lessons. I want to share with you the 10 most important themed insights. And if you want to participate in one, one-on-one -on -one firsthand and get to ask me any question you like, please rate your rank below, a way for me to contact you. And if you win the lottery, you will be one of the 10 lucky people with a free lesson in the coming weeks. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. See you next time.